Good evening, friends, and welcome in to a very special edition of Sports from the Couch, a postseason after show, it looks like, of this 2018-2019 uh, Chicago Bears season that ended in a, sorry for this, friends, clank, uh, losing to the Philadelphia Eagles 15-6 to at Soldier Field, the last wild card game of the weekend, and uh I mean, before we really get into anything, it was it was a heartbreaker. You know, it was definitely so crushing for a lack of a better, better, you know, phrase. I know it's, it's very hyperbolic, especially talking about sports. It's not that serious. But when we're having these conversations, it's all based off of what, you know, how we're feeling about the sports world. And it, nothing, you know, we know there's real problems. But now that the disclaimer is out of that way and we can, you know, get very uh, overdramatic and whatnot. Yeah. Last night was very soul crushing. I mean, that game had so many different things go on during it, and I don't know what what I'm struggling with right now. Before we really go down breaking down this game and and how it all went wrong, I guess what I want to go into first is my well, what I took from it, how I felt from it, what's the emotion, what was the roller coaster like, just everything from it. And I think the first thing we really need to get into is. What what went wrong first, you know, and what what did we learn from what went wrong? And I think the one thing that we we saw was there was a lot of imperfections for this team. And I think that what cost this team was everything we thought would cost them. Hang on one second, guys. Making sure we are all clear so everybody can hear us on this special Chicago Bears, Philadelphia Eagles, Eagles wild card breakdown. Some interesting stuff that happened. I want to make sure everybody's up and ready to go. And, um, you know, I will, we'll definitely be breaking down all the stats and everything. I have, actually have a whole notepad full of stuff. I'll show you guys in just one second. But I want to make sure we're all set up here so we can all enjoy it and talk to each other. So we can work this out together, guys. I know we, uh, I know from a lot of people on social media, over this past, you know, few hours are having a hard time dealing with it. But um, so now that we're all set up, yeah, let's go back to where I was talking about is how it went wrong. I mean, this game, it was a death of paper cuts. And it was everything that we said could go wrong that would need to go wrong for the Bears to lose this game happened. There was a lot of dumb mistakes. So what I want to get into, the first thing is people thought I was criticizing this defense on social media. The Bears aren't where they're at without that defense. It's one of the historic all-time greats, right? Can't take that away. It is what it is. But they had their opportunity. You know how in the NBA, if, if LeBron James gets a chance to win the game, they give the ball to him, right? It's his opportunity to make a play. That's what happened in this game. The defense, while admittedly tired, probably worn out, had made big defensive plays. Hell, kept this Philadelphia Eagles team to 16 points, right? When it mattered the most, when the game was on the line, when they needed a stop, when they needed to get off the field, they couldn't do it. And it that is what it is. That's just fact, right? Go to the offensive side. You get the ball back in awesome field position, and you go three and out, get six yards. You need a first down, maybe two first downs, and you win that game. Unacceptable. Unacceptable for them to to play that flog at those moments. But just so everybody's clear, I, I have literally a notepad full of notes we're going to get into on, on this episode. But those are the things that stuck out to me. If you want to go to Mitch before we go into numbers everything, just from what our eyes saw. With Mitch, it wasn't the stats are going to tell you one thing. He did not play a good first, second, hell, even third quarter. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that you saw him. And again, you got to give credit credits due, right? Yeah, he doesn't show up all game. The offense is as frustrating as it's been all season in the most important game of the season. But he showed up in that fourth quarter. Put them in a position to win. Went down the field. Got 33 yards. Put them a chip shot. I mean, in the NFL, 43 yards is nothing. And that leads into Cody Parkey. Look, it, it was literally one of these things we all knew was going to happen. It was one of those rare times where every person in that fandom, in that stadium, watching around the world, knew if the game came down to Cody Parkey, 
that was a very likely scenario. And I'm not one of these people that believes that you can uh, will things into existence. I may be a little bit, but not when it comes to that. This is sports, right? We talked about it at the beginning of the show. Can't take it all too serious, right? But that's weird. That's eerie. And I know the NFL now is saying that it was a tipped uh, field goal block. I was looking for the word to go of a tip block, but that doesn't change the fact where, okay, so let's say it is, that that's what it was, right? It's still on Parky. And here's why. I mean, people want to say oh, you're only blaming the kicker, but it is on Parky. Here's why. The kick, the, the field goal before when they iced him, you can see that it was a very, very close make. He he didn't get over the 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 goalposts. It was made by three feet. So if you look at the way he kicked it the second time, he was trying to get a little bit more oomph in it. And that's why it was a lower trajectory. So even then, if that's the adjustment, that's his adjustment. He made the wrong call. So, again, you put it on the guy that it's on. So I could blame the defense for not making a stop and letting Golden Tate score. I could blame the defense for having two bad penalties with Adrian Amos and Prince of Mukamura that shooting out of that, that team off that field that led to points. But fact remains, the, the Eagles gave the Bears a lot, a lot of opportunities. We saw with the, the, the Michael Bennett penalty. They were giving up just as many penalties to the Bears. The Bears just couldn't come up with points. Field goals are not going to be enough, and we saw it. Field goals were not going to be enough to win any Super Bowl. And, and let's just keep it to this game. This Bears offense averaged only 17 points. Now, if you look at their season total, that's a little different because their defense was so involved. But their defense without Eddie Jackson, there wasn't a, the, the takeaway wasn't the same. But here's another thing. You ended up with a plus two on the turnover margin. You got the ball twice. You couldn't do anything with it. So and this is just kind of the emotions that you felt through it. I mean, the Cody Parkey thing is just one of those moments where it's it's a rare moment in, in sports where we all were in it. We all felt it. We all lived it. We all remember that moment of this can't be happening. Is this going to happen? It almost felt like a movie. But we'll go ahead. I have a bunch of stuff that we that we have to get into so, obviously, the Eagles beat the Bears 16 to 15 at Soldier Field. Some numbers I want to get to on the Bears side. Mitchell Trubisky, 26 to 43, 303 yards and a touchdown. A lot of that coming in the fourth quarter. Tariq Cohen, only one rushing intercept and three catches. Only touched the ball four times. Four times. That's, again, your best player. That's unacceptable. Allen Robinson balled out. 10 receptions, 143 yards and a touchdown. Roquan Smith, Adrian Amos both had interceptions. Uh, Roquan Smith is, is going to be a superstar, especially playing next to Khalil Mack. And hopefully Akeem Hicks is, is as dominant next year as he was this year. And then into Philadelphia side, Nick Foles, 25 for 40, 266 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Obviously the touchdowns coming in big times. Alshon Jeffrey, six receptions, 82 yards. Zach Ertz, five receptions, five receptions, 52 yards. Golden Tate, five receptions, 46 yards and a touchdown. Dallas Golder, two receptions, two any yards, and a touchdown. And it's the one thing we said in the pregame show. And and I I, I it just it, it's happened all season. Linebackers, uh, excuse me, tight ends were eating up this Bears defense. And this was an offense that had an awesome two tight end set formation. Well, what are you going to do about it? You know they couldn't stop them. So those are kind of the stats that we have to go to. But there's a lot of more intricacies that happen throughout this game. And there's just random notes. So we might be jumping around a little bit. I, I really wanted to get on so we could just kind of talk about it, kind of get this emotion out there. There will be a normal Sports from the Couch episode tomorrow, Tuesday, for all you listening right now. But uh, we're doing we're going to do a, a, a post a postseason show right here. So uh, let's go ahead. Some, some notes that I wanted to get into. The Amos penalty that they were going three and out, and uh, the Prince of Mukamura won with the, uh, the Matthews holding his arm. You got to get off the field. Say what you will. I know the offense didn't carry this defense, didn't help us help them out as much as they needed, but you're the best defense in the league, and you needed a three and out, and you couldn't get it. And not only could you not get it, you were having dumb penalties. And here's here's something that, that a lot of people are talking about is you didn't hear Khalil Mack's name a lot during this game. I mean, Khalil Mack had a good game. You know, a couple tackles. A couple of uh, rushes, a couple of hurries, you know, saw him go on offense and that yeah, that gimmick two-point conversion. But, you know, you got to give all the, the credit to Jason Peters. 
You know, it, it, the guy is a, a super stud at, at offensive lineman, an old offensive lineman, but was a super stud. Absolutely dominated whoever he was guarding at that given moment. And, yeah, you know, it, it's hard. Because you're not going to blame the guy that got you there, right? But Khalil Mack just didn't have the impact game we thought he was going to. And it's one of those moments where he set the bar so high. He did so many things. I mean, in the beginning of the first six games of the season, people were talking about MVP stuff. And it's kind of crazy to look back after what Patrick Mahomes has done. But Khalil Mack, we were expecting that strip fumble, that big sack, that that big moment. Now, they swallowed up this, this Philadelphia running game, and he was involved in a lot of plays like that. But it just... It didn't happen. That high impact moment that we were expecting from Khalil Mack, it just, it just didn't come in this game. My zeal touches the ball twice before Tariq Cohen. I don't know what the fascination is with, with, with my zeal and this, and this coaching off, this coaching staff, but Tariq Cohen can't touch the ball only four times. I mean, I think between him and Jordan Howard, it was less than 14. That's, you can't, you can't do that. Like, you just can't, especially with Trey Burden being out. And we'll get to Trey Burden in just a little bit. Which, you can see how involved Trey Burden was on this offense and part of this attack and what it meant to not have him on there. And by the way, Adam Shaheen, you're six foot seven. You're, you're seven feet four. 400 pounds. Run straight. The dude's 5'10", a buck 80. You need three more yards. Like, Woosa. What else do we got? You know, I, I wrote it here. Defense had its chance. I mean, the defense had its chance in this game. You know, you ask as an athlete, and with these athletes, you always hear them talk about it. You ask for this moment to prove why you're the best. And I'm not saying that they didn't ball out and they weren't trying. I mean, you only gave up 16 points. But that moment was there. That legacy moment. That Hall of Fame moment. That NFL Films moment was right there. You stop Golden Tate. You stop Alshon Jeffrey on that long 39. You get off the field with those stupid two dumb penalties between Amos and Amukamara. It's a ball game. Same could be said about that offense, though. You know, one first down, maybe even a second first down, and you win this game. And you know what's going to get lost in this whole conversation is... That horrible punt that O'Donnell had 36 yards, that, I mean, that, what are you going to do there? If you're a defense, like, not only do we have to stop him again, but we have no field position. I mean, it was an uphill battle. And here's another thing, too. That's a, Talk about special teams. We've been talking about it leading up into this matchup against Philadelphia. It was all going to come down to that damn special teams. It was the weakest part of this Bears team this season. Let me get a sip of uh, this delicious cafecito. You know what's ironic about this game? It's ironic. You know what's ironic about this game is Cody Parkey kept them in it. And I, I said this to my brother who was over when we were watching the game. We, uh, we mentioned, you know, if Cody Parkey, I, I told him if Cody Parkey is hitting these extra points, I mean, that's just good juju for, for the Bears. That's, that's good energy. That's good stuff that's happening in the universe. There, there might be a chance that they might not need Cody Parkey to, to hit a big field goal. They get a touchdown. They get ahead of it. And he kept them in the game. He did his job leaning into the biggest moment. But it comes down to, you know, a lot of people don't see kickers as football players. They see him more as specialists, right? And if you're a specialist and you're making $9 million like Cody Parkey is, make your kicks, right? But he kept them in the game. He was the reason they were in this game. He misses a kick and it's not, it's, it, look at the box scores. It's totally different. We're looking at a 12 16 game. It's one where we're killing the Bears. And I mean, what's also crazy is Cody Parkey makes that kick. The legacy and, and and legend of Mitchell Trubisky grows because he drove him down the field as his first playoff game and 
doesn't struggle the same way Deshaun Watson does. And we'll see how Patrick Mahomes does this coming up week. You know, I mentioned earlier this defense had its opportunity. Only one sack. Nick Foles just, that was a bad man yesterday. That was a bad man. Didn't didn't look flustered. Made two bad passes, but so did Mitchell Trubisky, right? The difference is Trubisky didn't get luck, got lucky and, and those balls didn't get intercepted. But Nick Foles, it just didn't matter. He wasn't, he didn't get shake. Like he wasn't, he, they couldn't get to him. They couldn't break him. And you got to commend them, but that's, that's the pedigree of a champion, right? That's, that's what happens when somebody's been there before. You know, and sticking with this defense just earlier today, Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator for the Bears, had a long interview with the Denver Broncos. And the Miami Dolphins actually uh, took away their, their interview with, with Fangio. It seems like that's where he's going to land. And it's something that I brought up. This this won't be the same team next year. It's something we've been bringing up all season on this show. This team will not be the same. They won't be as healthy. They won't have the same chemistry. They might not have the same coaching staff. They'll definitely not have the same rotation. Guys will come. Guys will go. Guys will get traded. Guys will get drafted. Guys will get released. Guys will get injured. It's a completely different ball game next year. And we'll get into that in, in a little bit. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if if adventure leaves, it's a huge thing. But the talent's still there, right? The big names are still there. You're still building on Roquan Smith. You're still building with Khalil Mack. So we'll see how what ends up happening. And of course, we'll be breaking down here on Sports from the Couch. We want to take this second too, guys. We didn't do it in the beginning of the show, but if you want to be in touch with us all over social media, we're everywhere in the universe. I'm on Twitter at mercado233. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. You can follow Nicole at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the good brother Alex at Mercado21 Alex. You can follow the pop culture show at Good Brothers Pod. We're also all on Instagram. I'm at Mike Mercado2333. Nicole's at Typing When Tipsy. Alex is at Mercado2121. And we have a true crime show that you can follow at Murder Mysteries and more. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. We're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Visit us at patreon.com to get our interviews ad free before anybody else with athletes and celebrities. Download us, like, rate, review, and share us anywhere to get your favorite podcast iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, wherever it's at, at Mercado Airwaves. And a huge shout out to Munch Art Design. Like him on Facebook, at Munch, Munch Art Design. And while you're at it, like us on Facebook, at Mercado Airwaves. So here's another interesting too I saw on social media that a lot of people were talking about was, what are going to be the moves moving forward for this team? And here's this, the truth. This is why it's so important to win when you have the opportunity. They don't have money. And they don't have draft picks. So what happens when you get a big superstar? So what happens when you make a big move? And it goes back to what I've been saying all, all season. It's not going to be the same team next year. Some of the players may, some of the names may stay the same. Some of the schemes may stay the same. But year to year in the NFL, there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of change. And whether Vic Banjo gets a job as the head coach of, of the Denver Broncos, whether Akeem Hicks has the same Pro Bowl type of season, Khalil Mack stays healthy. Roquan Smith keeps developing. Kyle Fuller has a career season again. There's there's a chance you lose Bryce Callahan. Leonard Floyd needs to keep developing. How good could Goldman get? Like there's see there's a lot of questions on there, and the NFL is so year to year. And without the money to be able to bring in somebody, without the draft picks to bring in somebody, with owing somebody like Cody Parkey nine million dollars. They put themselves in a position to be viable and competitive. But there's also, it's, it's just a double-edged sword of it. So we talked about it earlier, the injuries that happened leading into this game. No Trey Burton, who had a groin injury leading into this game. And he talked to, had a weird statement to the media talking about it's a defense mechanism, that his body shuts down when it feels like it's in danger or something. Weird stuff with Trey Burton. But you saw all game. That that offensive scheme against Philadelphia had Trey Burden written all over it. And it just didn't pan out that way. And just just his answer, just just the way he spoke about it. And and I think a lot of local shows have done a good job of maybe we just don't get the way he he talks about it or the way he 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 shows himself. But that was a weird, weird statement and a weird time for that injury. So 
I think it really hurt that team. And Adam Shaheen is a step down from Trey Burton. And I don't think Trey Burton's anything to go home about, to, to write home about. But comparative, like, yeah, he's an offensive weapon. Whether you've seen from the shovel pass or you've seen you know, that play where Adam Shaheen decided that he needed to do a, a Madden move and jump up in the air against a 5'10 quarterback when he's six foot eight. But, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that it's the little things, right? But then at the end, we're going to blame it on Cordy Park anyway. That's the frustrating part, right? The death by paper cuts. It's exactly what we said on the pregame show. That's how they were going to lose this game. That's how Philadelphia was going to win this game. It was going to be a slow death. I got into a conversation on social media about when we've been talking about here, this team going to change over the next few months. And, you know, even though they don't have a lot of money, they don't have a lot of draft picks that they are going to be making moves this coming off off season. And and Matt Nagy, the coach of the team said to himself, it's not going to be the same team next year. It's not going to be the same group of guys. Your defensive coordinator probably is going to get a job somewhere else. You can only be so healthy so many times. You know, Akeem Hicks had a career season. This year, Kyle Fuller, this was the same city ready to ship and deliver Kyle Fuller to Green Bay. He had a career year. Is that a guarantee he's going to have it next year? We saw with Eddie Jackson, who was also part of being hurt, dressed in and play. In a great play, gets hurt like that. That's how fast it happens in the NFL. There's no guarantees. This isn't the NBA. This isn't MLB where there's a window. There's no window. The window is that season that you're in. You don't believe it? Look around the NFL. Who was in the AFC Championship game last year? Jacksonville Jaguars. Where are they at? Who was in the Super Bowl just a few years ago? Carolina Panthers. Where are they at? The Atlanta Falcons. Right? Historic Super Bowl. Some call it the greatest Super Bowl ever. ever. Sitting at home. Aaron Rodgers. Considered the best quarterback in his era. When was the last time he stepped the Super Bowl? There's no guarantees in the NFL. And you're kidding yourself if you believe so. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to have faith and that they don't have certain pieces that can make a move or can make a run and you get lucky here. You get, they got lucky this year. They had the breaks this year. Next year, they have a division champion schedule. No draft picks, no money. It can only The only way it gets better is if everybody on your team takes a step forward, including the most important part, your quarterback. And that's no guarantee in the NFL. One thing also, too, is there was only one time in, in the whole game that there was back-to-back rushing attempts. You know, it's unacceptable. And Matt Nagy brought it up. You, Tariq Owen needs to touch the ball more, especially if you're calling him your Tyreek Hill. And there was that offense was not – this was not the same offense. And that's what's really frustrating, right, is you know this offense has the scheme and the talent to put up points. But it felt like they were just in mud that first half. And hell, even that third quarter. Again, I, and we've talked about, don't let Mitch's complete stats fool you. He had a great fourth quarter. And we'd be talking about how great that fourth quarter was had Parkey made that kick. But everything, everything's still equal. Everything would be on the table. They were put in those situations because Mitch couldn't get a first down. Because there were times where Mitch was three and out, three and out, because he couldn't get the ball to his receivers. And then after he hurt his heel, that took away half the game for him. Uh, there's there's also dumb penalties. We talked about the Prince of Mukamura and the the Amos, Amos uh, penalty, but that 10 men on the field with that uh, touchdown that Philadelphia scored, I mean, that's that right there. Again, death by paper cut is two bad penalties and then leading into not having any any communication, not having the awareness that that was going on. Coaching staff didn't see it. The players didn't see it. And if they did, nobody nobody acknowledged it. Nobody called a timeout. And it's hard to hard to play in the NFL when you're down a, re, a, a defender. And it was, it, again, death by paper cuts in this game. And Ten men on the field. Biggest game of the year. You're the best part of this team. I'm not going to blame them because they got them to this point. But you have to be fair if you're going to be criticizing criticizing people. And it just goes into it. They just couldn't get off the field. And no, there were certain points like the Bears made plays when they had to. Obviously, there were there were moments where, you know, they came up with big stops and there were three outs. But when it mattered the most, when they needed a stop, they couldn't get it. That's just what it is. 
And we mentioned earlier the cake being blocked. And for all you who are just joining us now, it doesn't change the fact that we saw Cody Parkey adjust because of the kick that was iced. So he made the adjustment. It's still on him. And I don't want to get, you know, ignore the fact that this offense didn't look good in the first four, first three quarters of that game. They just didn't. And I think what's most important is that we saw development of Mitchell Trubisky, right? We saw him getting comfortable, him making big plays, him making dumb, dangerous plays, him taking a counter, a countership of those dumb plays. But fact remains, we still have a lot of questions heading into next season. Can Mitchell Trubisky win a Super Bowl? If this defense and if this team plays the same exact way, even has to now play better to win. And that's the scary thing, right? This team was great. This defense was great. Had offensive weapons. Offensive innovation, right? And not only was it not good enough, it was clearly not good enough. There were clearly moments where you're like, oh, no, this does not look good. There's a different level. This is a different animal in the playoffs. And we saw that. We saw that. So I, that, those are just kind of like the big notes that, uh, that I brought up. And, you know, obviously the Mitch being hurt thing with his heel. I mean, that changed... That changed it because Mitch, we talk about it, and people love that when he was getting drafted, he was a accurate quarterback, which I don't even think he's all that accurate. He makes a nice plays, and he will make a nice play every once in a while, but he's not that accurate. But he does, he's very athletic, and not just in getting a first down by with his legs, but he makes plays by extending them. So you got to give him credit for that, and he just didn't have that after, after getting hurt. So that definitely, you know, you could tell that that definitely – so between the heel getting hurt later into the game and Trey Burden having the groin injury leading into the Sunday game, I mean they were hobbled. They were definitely hobbled. And again, there it goes, right there. That was that was one playoff game. If that happens, week four, week seven, week thirteen, you're not in the playoffs in 2019, 2020. So. You know, I've seen a lot of a lot of reaction from you guys, and I get it, right? There's so many ways we could break this down. We could talk about all the different types of ways the Bears should have won this game. But if they if Cody Parkey makes the kick, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that's how simple it is. That's what it comes down to. He missed the kick. The way he missed the kick is what makes it an all timer. And that's the thing that I think a lot of Bears fans are going to have to come to grips with. This was an all-timer. We're talking NFL films, 30 for 30s, top 10 list. This is it. The Cody Parkey game. Cody Parkey season. You can't bring him back. You can't. For his sake, for the sake of this team. Moving forward, morality. Nobody's saying that he's a bad guy. Nobody's saying that. And first of all, for all you garbage human who are threatening him, and get over yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is still a game. And, you know, he's, you, you talk, like, I've, I've acknowledged that I, I make my living talking about men that are greater than me. He's done great things in his life. He's accomplished things. He'll be remembered, good or bad, right? So chill out on threatening people, but criticize, he deserves the criticism. He's a specialist, and he didn't do his job. And that's a fact. So I guess moving forward, we can look a little bit. It's hard, right? I think I don't want to look too forward because the draft is still too far away. The Bears won't. The Bears can make moves. We don't know. I'm not going to handcuff them and say just because it doesn't look like they have the, the, they have the chance to make moves that they're not going to. But I want that to be clear. They don't have a lot of money, and they don't have a lot of draft capital. So that take that for what it's worth. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some creativity to see this team get better for next season. But don't forget that the NFL has a lot of turnover. And we've seen it this year. This Bears team is that example from worst to first. It'll happen again next year. Somebody, probably two teams in the NFL, will go from worst to first and first to worst. You want to avoid being one of those teams. You want to be one of those teams that's hovering around anywhere from 9-7 to 12-4. You would love 13-3, 14-2, of course. But if you're there, 
you have a chance, especially in the NFL where it's all parity. There's no guarantee. You saw it this season. I'll bring it back up. It's not going to be the same team. Guys are going to leave. Guys are going to get injured. Cleo Mack has already been injured this season. We've already seen Trubisky get hurt this season. We've seen Allen Robinson out of games this season. They don't have a lot of depth, too, by the way, which is a concern. We saw it this game. They don't have a lot of a lot of depth. But next season, it could go worse. It could get better. They could go 14 and 2. They could pull Rams, go 14 and 2, run through the NFC, be the favorites, and go to the Super Bowl. It's the NFL. That can happen. And I don't want to, I don't want to take that away from, from hope and from but we have to talk about the other side. The other side could be six and ten. Guys got hurt, and it just wasn't the same. The all of a sudden the Vikings made a run. Or the Packers made a run. Packers actually just got a new head coach. We'll, we'll talk about that on Sports on the Couch tomorrow. But that's how fast the NFL turns around. And you gotta take account for people who didn't make the playoffs that are gonna be in good positions next year. So with that in mind. It is hard for a lot of... I understand. I understand why a lot of people are upset. It is so crushing and the way it happened and everything that came around it. But the way the Russian roulette rose in the NFL, we've thought, we've, we we literally just said it. Bears could be 6 and 10 next year, maybe 14 and 2. But it won't be the same group of guys. And I, and I keep saying it. I know people hate me on social media when I say it. That's the truth. Like... The, the team that you love, this team that you had a great adventure with, these these go-getters, these out-of-nowhere bears, it won't be the same group of guys next year. A- expectations won't be the same. Anticipation won't be the same. It'll be a different ride. It might end in that fairy tale moment where, uh, at least as a bear fan base, we're hanging out in February getting ready to celebrate on the lakefront. Uh, Vince Lombardi returning the Lombardi Trophy to Chicago and the beloved Bears. Or they could be 4-12. and 12. It's the NFL. That's, that's what it is. And this game, this game between the Eagles and the Bears that ended in a Cody Parkey clank, double clank, is a microcosm of that. Mistakes. Taking advantage of things. Bad officiating. Questionable calls. Inches. Decided it. This year, during the regular season, a lot of lot of plays and a lot of moments went the Bears' way. There's no guarantee that's going to happen next year. And we just saw that in one game, elimination, like the NFL playoffs that they are, it doesn't matter what your record was. It doesn't matter what your rankings were. It's all about that moment. And at that moment, the weakest point of that Bears team cost them. And the reason why it feels so hollow, the reason why it feels so abrupt, because a lot of us knew if you got out of Chicago, if you found your way to L.A., you were going to be in that game. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantees of football. But you liked your chances against L.A. You had a fighter's chance. You had a, a legitimate chance of beating a favorite and potentially hosting an NFC Championship game. And if you're New Orleans... You were afraid of the Bears. That's the one team you were kind of scared of, other than probably this Philadelphia team now, right? And now that's gone. That's why it feels so empty. I think for a lot of people, too, in this city and sports fans from the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, the Midwest, wherever, you know, it's, it's the world's big, right? For all you Chicago fans, I think we've been spoiled. The Blackhawks, all-timer, right? All-time run. The Cubs in the middle of, of trying to build their their – their legacies. The White Sox, that 05 team, one of the best teams ever. And now trying to get Manny Machado and or Bryce Harper. And then this Bears team, since 1985-86, hasn't won a, a Super Bowl. Hadn't been in the playoffs since 2010, 2000, 2012. Like, this wasn't... There was a certain... And I hate to say it, there's a Cubsism to this. And one of the, one of the friends of the show, Paul Shavari, brought it up. And I'm not one of these superstitious guys, but obviously I'm a Cub fan. So if you're going to play with that, you know, go down that road, yeah, it feels kind of weird. Feels Cleveland Brownish, you know? Feels Buffalo Billish. Feels kind of like a defining moment for a franchise for a long time. But you got to get over that. 
you got to get over that hump. Maybe that's the test, right? Maybe in some in that weird universe in which there is something as NFL football gods, sports gods, maybe this is the test. Got to get over it. Got to overcome this. Is there a window for them to win it? Absolutely. Is there a window for this? Can the window be shut literally tomorrow, depending on a left or a right? Absolutely. But all I know is we're going to be talking about this for a long time. And I want you guys to be involved in every single conversation that we have. I really appreciate you guys joining me for this special edition of Sports from the Couch. The Chicago Bears fall to the Philadelphia Eagles 15 to 6 at 15 to 16 at Soldier Field, ending their season. And a lot of people really disappointed. A lot of the fan base disappointed. Cody Parkey clanking it twice in one play. And the Bears are eliminated from the playoffs. But we'll uh, we'll be We'll be talking all about that. We'll keep an eye on to see if defensive coordinator Vic Bangio finds a head coaching job. We'll talk about the Packers getting their new head coach and what's going to happen with this roster and what Ryan Pace has to say. Very interested to hear what the general manager says about this team, about this game, and what he has planned for the future. Because it's his guy that he gave all this money to in Cody Park. Does he get rid of him? Does he take the cap hit and try to find somebody? Why wasn't there a competition after that five clean game? We'll find out. We'll have a lot of questions. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys showing me for this special Facebook Live edition. Bears fall to the Eagles 15-16 to 16 at Soldier Field this past Sunday night. Eliminate, being eliminated from the NFL playoffs on Wild Card Weekend. Follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter at mmercado2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. I'm on Instagram at MikeMercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333. You can download us, like, rate, review, and share us anywhere you get your podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Visit us at Patreon, patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. There you can hear our interviews ad free before anybody else with athletes and celebrities. Guys, I interviewed Becky Lynch. Pretty badass, right? We've interviewed like 14 world champions from the UFC. It's probably more than that. Oscar winners, Grammy winners. Check us out. Anyway, get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. A huge shout out to Munch Art Design for powering us here at the network. Like them on Facebook at Munch Art Design. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. And a huge shout out to my co-hosts, Nicole and Alex. Make sure you guys are following them all over social media. Nicole's on Twitter at Typing When tipsy you can follow alex and mercado 21 alex you can follow our pop culture podcast show on twitter at good brothers pod and on instagram you can follow each one of them alex is at mercado 2121 nicole's at typing when tipsy and you can follow our true crime show at murder mysteries and more that'll do it for us guys uh we really appreciate you joining us on this monday evening we'll talk about it guys we'll get through this together it'll be a fast-paced off season. By the time you know it, it'll be spring training. By the time you know it, they'll be reporting to camp and we'll be ready for another season in the NFL. But until then, we'll have our ears and eyes set on the coaching search that is Vic Fangio, the roster moves, and your your thoughts and emotions, guys. Let us know all over social media. Thank you for joining us here on a special edition on Facebook Live of Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airways Network. I'm Mike Mercado. <laughs>